morning everyone, my name is uh, Sara Ricci, I am a PhD student at University of Cassino in Satellazzo and today I'm presenting the results of an activity we carried out together with uh, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology regarding the influence of the stress state on uh, ductile damage. It is indeed well known that the fracture strain of a material, which is the final level of deformation the material reaches before fracture, is strongly influenced by the loading conditions, since uh, different mechanisms can be activated and work together to cause the final failure of the material. One of the first parameters introduced to address the influence of the stress state on material ductility is the stress triaxiality, which is the ratio between the applied pressure and um, the equivalent of stress. And consistently with uh, board growth models predictions, it was shown that in increasing the stress triaxiality, materials exhibited a reduction in ductility. This is true for tensile dominated loadings, but in case of mixed or shear dominated loadings, materials may exhibit different behaviors depending on their shear sensitivity. And uh, these results uh, highlighted how stress triaxiality alone is not enough to throughout model the behavior of shear sensitive materials, but other parameters, depending on the third invariant of the stress tensor, should be taken into consideration. The aim of this work is to evaluate the fracture response of the aluminum alloy 2024, which is well known for its shear sensitivity. And in order to do so, we optimized the geometry of four different samples, which realize different combinations of stress triaxiality and the loader parameter, spanning from tension dominant to shear dominant loading conditions. We also looked closely into the damage mechanisms of this alloy with uh, SEM Institute investigation, and we correlated these uh, experimental results to the evolution of local strain using DSC techniques. And finally, given the experimental results, we uh, proposed uh, and validate a J3 dependent material model which is able to reproduce the behavior of this alloy under the different testing conditions. The aluminum alloy under investigation is a 2000 series alloy, so its major alloying element is copper, but we also have high concentrations of uh, manganese and magnesium, which are added to improve the quenching properties of the alloy. We investigated the microstructure of the as received materials by means of uh, EBSD and EDS, and uh, as a result uh, of the standard processing of the alloy, which includes solution treatment and quenching, followed by core working for stress relief, we have a uh, high macrostructural anisotropy with uh, very big grains uh, elongated along the rolling direction. And during the last phase of natural aging, we have the precipitation of uh, large intermetallic particles, which are mainly composed by aluminum, copper and magnesium, or uh, aluminum, manganese, iron and uh, silicon. A macroscopic load versus displacement response of the alloy for the selected geometries is shown here on the left. The analysis of the fracture surfaces, which show a transition from dimple dominant to shear dominant, was instead used to get some insights on the damage mechanisms. We can see that for the sample with a zero degree notch, the fracture surface is characterized by the presence of normal dimple, which are developed under uh, triaxiality lead failures. The sample with a 90 degree notch instead shows the presence of uh, shear dimples, which are typical of uh, shear dominated loadings. For the sample with uh, the 45 degree notch instead, we have the presence of both shear dimples and uh, normal dimples. Looking closely at the fracture surfaces, we can see the presence of uh, broken intermetallic particles, which uh, are recognized as the principal damage mechanism for uh, this alloy. 
Using SEM in situ techniques, we monitor the behavior of these particles on the surfaces of the different tested geometries, and we evaluated the local strain evolution in the monitoring point using DSC techniques. What we've seen is that uh, these particles uh, start breaking in a brittle matter very early during the loading process. And usually the particles that break first uh, are those characterized by a bigger and more irregular shape, which have a higher stress concentration around them. Increasing the load, more particles start to break, and uh, we identified as a nucleation strain, the strain at which most particles had broken at least once. And uh, the newly created voids continue to grow during the following loading steps and uh, eventually form uh, micro cracks, which lead to the material failure. The results we obtained for the zero degree notched sample were uh, consistent uh, to the other tested geometries as well. Uh, the main difference is the orientation of the fracture plane of the particles. Indeed, these particles break in a brittle manner, so uh, their uh, fracture plane is uh, perpendicular to the maximum principal stress direction. And changing the loading condition, the orientation of the fracture plane is uh, indeed different. The experimental results were used to define the best modeling approach to reproduce the behavior of uh, the investigated alloy. Model the influence of the shear stress states on the macroscopic material response, we decided to implement Kronen Fales called Gear Criterion, which is a yield surface that is a function of both the second and the third invariant of the stress sensors and can be uh, considered as an extension of uh, von Mises criterion for a shear sensitive material. And uh, in the presence of uh, shear loading conditions, Conditions, the Yeltsin phase uh, is able to model a behavior which is included between uh, von Mises and Tresca's Yeltsin phases depending on the selected parameters. The damage modeling of the alloy was carried out with uh, the plasticity damage self-consistent model, which uh, is a damage model recently developed in the context of uh, continuum damage mechanics. The model takes into consideration both uh, the influence of stress triaxiality and of the third invariant of the stress sensor on damage, and uh, it is able to model different damage mechanisms such as void growth, intervoid sheeting and shearing. The model requires the identification of a damage nucleation law, which we fitted on the experimental results obtained with the SEM in situ techniques and of a failure locus. We uh, compared the, the fracture response of our alloy to other experimental uh, data in literature. And what we've seen is that uh, our alloy has a, a comparable tensile response to other literature data, but uh, has a higher resistance under shear conditions. And the uh, comparison between the experimental results and the numerical prediction. We can see that the model is able to reproduce with a high level of accuracy both the microscopic load versus displacement response and uh, the evolution of the total strain in the monitoring area. Moreover, the damage model can uh, predict with a high accuracy, the failure point for uh, the different tested geometries. The model is also able to provide a close representation of the fracture morphologies for the different tested samples. Here, we can see the comparison between the experimental and the numerically predicted fracture surfaces for the 90 degree and 45 degree notched samples. In this work, we investigated the influence of the stress state on the mechanical response of the aluminum alloy 2024 with different sample geometries which realize different combinations of stress triaxiality and load parameter. 
We also investigated the mechanisms of uh, damage nucleation with uh, SEM in situ investigation and uh, DSC techniques. The material damage starts uh, with uh, the brittle fracture of uh, large intermetallic particles normal to the principal stress direction and uh, increasing the load, the newly generated voids grow and propagate into the matrix, causing the final failure of the material. From the experimental results, we proposed and validated a plasticity and damage model that takes into account the shear sensitivity of the material, and uh, we validated the model by the comparison of numerical and experimental data.